Hey kid, come here. You ever been in a tunnel before? You ever been real deep under the ground in a very long tunnel? It's all dark and the walls are made of dirt. It makes you feel like a worm. Like a really tall worm. But you're smarter than a worm because you know how to fry an egg. That's what separates worm from man. It's frying an egg. Don't you want to feel like a worm, kid? Go on. Find the tunnel. Get in there. But it can't be my tunnel. I'm too shy. All right, kid. Get out of here. But before you go, I'm going to talk to you for 20 more minutes about a guy I learned about on Wikipedia. Born with the curse of owning everything under the sun. Richie, Richie works for me and he sold me a seventh son. Pennies from heaven, my dog chef's name is Devin. If the best is number one, I'm twice as good, man, I'm 11. William John Cavendish Scott Bentinck. John Bentinck for short, or as I like to call him, El Diablo, was the fifth Duke of Portland in 1854. Wait, I just thought of a better nickname for him. Professor Death Punch. Actually, I'll just call him the Duke. He was known for being a crazy, wacky guy. And everybody was scared of him because he had social anxiety. The Duke had this massive estate called Welbeck Abbey. It was so big, it was like the size of an airplane. Or at least 10 sharks. Maybe more. And he basically didn't use any of it. But there were so many rooms. There was a library. He took all of the furniture out of the estate and he painted all the walls pink. But he spent 100% of the time digging tunnels underground and building this elaborate maze for himself that spanned over 15 miles. So for this, he earned a spot in the Neurodivergent Guy Hall of Fame alongside other historic icons such as Isaac Newton, that gorilla that knows sign language, and white Jesus. On top of that, he painted all the walls in the tunnels pink too. So he's also in the Hall of Fame for neurodivergent gay guys with Isaac Newton again and our old friend Pope Boniface VI. Now that's a Katie callback. The Duke never wanted to meet anyone, he never wanted anyone to come over, and he didn't even want anyone to look at him. All of the employees were instructed to never acknowledge him at all, in any way, forever. One time, one of his employees tipped his hat to him, and he got fired right away. The craziest part about this was that he fired him out of a cannon for some reason. This is true. He put him in a cannon, and he fired it off, and it shot him into a second cannon. And then they fired that one off, and it launched him into a third cannon. And then they shot that one, and it launched him directly into the Twin Towers. This is all true. I'm not making any of this up. Even though he did all that stuff, he was actually really nice to his employees, and he paid them really well. So he earned the nickname, The Workman's Friend which is a bad nickname and sucks. They should have went with Professor Death Punch cause that one's cool. People mostly liked him because he was hiring half the town to do a bunch of digging. Turns out it's really hard to dig 15 miles of tunnels cause digging tunnels is worm behavior. People were not meant to do that. It's sacrilege. It's an assault on mankind's holy genesis. You need a ton of people to overpower the will of God and make that many tunnels. So all these laborer guys were hanging out on his estate and moving dirt all the time. And they'd dig holes in his lawn so that he could hide in the holes and watch them while they dug more holes and tunnels. And these holes were super big. And brother, uh, don't we all love a big hole?
Some of them were so big, they had full trees growing in them with a big glass roof above. In the tunnels, he had gardens. He had a library. He had a ballroom with a big hydraulic lift. He had a freaking roller rink. And there was a private tunnel that took him all the way to the train station, which I think oh, it's probably far away. So some of these workers were like, hey, what are you going to do in the tunnels? And whoever said that got fired, probably out of a cannon, because that's what makes sense to me. But if you were a good little boy who kept your fucking mouth shut about what went on in the tunnels, You'd get an umbrella, a suit of clothes, a top hat, and a donkey, which is a pretty fucking sweet deal. I would have put the hat on the donkey. And the guys all got access to healthcare. It's hard to say if that's a good thing or not, because doctors back then were basically lumberjacks for people. These guys had nothing else to do all day outside of digging holes. So they just talked about the Duke all the time. All these rumors spread because everyone was working for him and he was weird and they never saw him at all because he was, let's face it, jacking off in the tunnels. If you think he was doing anything other than jacking off in there, then brother, you're a damn fool. He never wanted to talk to anyone. He just wanted to spend his entire life alone in his goon cave. So all of his instructions and correspondence to anyone were sent in writing. He had his servants bring him his food on this little tiny train that ran on rails through the tunnels. And he insisted on there being a chicken roasting all the time, 24 seven. If there was not a chicken roasting, he would lose it. He would get violent. He would start hitting people because he was mad and he needed a chicken roasting. Other than that, he was a normal, happy guy. The Duke also mostly only went out at nighttime and he would have a lady servant walk 40 yards in front of him and carry a lantern to make sure nobody ever saw him or tried to talk to him or touch him at all. If he did go out during the day, he would wear two coats with extremely high collars and he'd wear a really tall hat and carry a huge umbrella. So if anybody ever tried to come up to him and look at him, he could hide behind his umbrella and say, go oh, away, I hate you, oh, I hate you so much, get away from here, leave me alone, I'll kill you, I'll kill you with my mind. And then he would use his mind powers to levitate them into the air and throw them through a brick wall. But they didn't see him pretending to do that because he was behind the umbrella and the top hat. The Duke was really fucking weird. So people had a lot of fun gossiping about him and trying to find out why he was weird. There was a theory that he was a madman. Honestly, I don't think he was a madman. I think he was just an insane guy. He doesn't seem like he got mad that much. I mean, there was the chicken thing, but that's kind of it. Some people thought he was really ugly and embarrassed about his gross, ugly face. And some people said he was actually having sex orgies all the time. Personally, I just think he was jacking off too much and that did something to his brain that caused him to become weird. But by all accounts, he was just a normal looking guy. He wasn't ugly or a sex pervert. Anyways, he died and it was a huge deal. Everyone was talking about it because they didn't know people could die. They're finding out about this for the first time and they are freaking out. Plus, he was a weird and confusing man and half the town was working for him, digging his tunnels, so they didn't know what to do now. So guys, um, I just got really sad thinking about how the Duke died. I get sad when someone dies. I don't know, it's just something about me. I guess I'm sort of weird for that, but I'm, I'm gonna have to go cry for a few hours. So um, for now, we're just gonna go to Trevor time, so. Take it away, Trevor. Uh, it's Trevor time. Did it.
Hello, gentlemen and some ladies. I'm just here to tell you that pretty much everything she's been saying has been true, except that uh, he didn't have any cannons. He did not put his workers into cannons and fire them out of cannons, and the Twin Towers aren't real. He did fire some guy for tipping his hat, according to what we've read. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's the fact check. Our fact check is brought to you by... I'd put a sponsor right here. If we had a sponsor, email below. Thank you. Everybody like and subscribe so that we can get a sponsor. Hi, welcome back. I hope you had a good Trevor time. So anyways, the Duke just died. Oh no, that sucks. Man, Ugh. I hate that. But everyone got over it, it's fine. But then 18 years later in 1897, some lady named Anna Maria Drews came out and said that the Duke was actually her father-in-law and that he was living a double life. Say what? Her father-in-law was named Thomas Charles Druce, and he died in 1864. Anna said that Druce died 15 years before the Duke did, but that actually he, fa he faked his own death and he was the Duke. So then if Druce was the Duke and Anna was his daughter-in-law, and I was also there doing my own thing, then that would mean that Anna's son is the actual heir to the estate. Whoa. Oh my God. Anna was saying this and she kept being like, you don't believe me? Go dig up his grave then. You'll see, there's nothing in it. And so the home office was like, okay. And then Anna was like, wait, no, don't. So they never dug up this guy's body. Plus by now they realize that they shouldn't be digging up guys' bodies because it's yucky. And they've done that too much already. By the way, check out my last video. It's all about digging up a guy's body and doing weird stuff to it. Okay. Still, Anna was adamant that Bruce wasn't in the coffin, but he actually had some more kids in Australia and they came out and they were like, nah, he's dead. I saw it happen. He got in a brutal fight with a wallaby. Crikey, your head must be full of dingoes, mate. Cause he's dead. Anna was then put in an insane asylum because her head was full of dingoes. So then she probably died. I don't know who cares but it didn't end there. Another random guy who had nothing to do with any of this came out and also said that the Duke faked his own death and was actually Thomas Drews. His name was Robert C. Caldwell. This guy was more of a freak than anyone else in the story. Caldwell was a notorious scam artist, but he was also completely fucking stupid, so he was really bad at scamming. He came out and echoed the claim that the Duke was actually Thomas Charles Drews, and he came up with insane lies to back that up. He wrote up an affidavit, which I'm going to link in the description because this guy is fucking crazy. So here's his story as he tells it. When Caldwell was 19, he had a horribly disfigured, gross, weird nose. He went to a lot of doctors around England, but none of them could fix it. Then some guy named Sir Morel Mackenzie told Caldwell about this doctor in India who had been able to help guys with weird noses. So then Caldwell went to see this guy and he actually fixed it. And then when he came back, he saw Sir Morel Mackenzie and he was like, oh my God, you're so beautiful now. You look great, you should do surgery on people. So Caldwell started doing surgery on people. I guess because he had surgery, so now he can do it. I don't understand what this guy was thinking, but he was a guy with worms in his brain, so it made sense to him. 
One of his patients he performed surgery on was apparently the Duke. He said he cured his nose and the Duke was so happy with it that he wanted to be best friends and hang out all the time and tell him all of his secrets. You know, like what you do with your doctor. So Caldwell said some things that seemed a bit fruity. Keep in mind that he was making all of this up and that it wasn't real. It was fan fiction. Anime and One Direction weren't around yet, so they had to write fan fiction about dukes. And they didn't have Wattpad either, so they had to write affidavits. Some of the quotes from here were, the Duke told me many times that he wished me to never leave him. Another was, as he appeared to desire me to come there constantly, I was glad to please him and did so. Also, I attended the Duke as his companion, merely for my own pleasure. And then later in it, he said, the Duke grabbed me by my waist and pulled me closer. My petite hips locked in his grip. I blushed and looked away, but felt his strong hand softly stroke my chin, guiding my virgin gaze back to his. I've never done this before, I said timidly. He leaned in, pressing his powerful chest against mine. I felt his warm breath on my neck. Then let me show you, he said. He didn't say that last one. I wrote it and I thought it was really good and I wanted to read it to you guys. Still, either way, these guys were definitely gay kissing. But soon enough, Caldwell had to leave him. The Duke was like, please, no, I love you. And Caldwell was like, sorry, I have to go to Australia. And the Duke was like, if you leave, I will kill myself. But Caldwell didn't really care, so he left anyways. And now we reach the point where Caldwell goes back and explains how he helped the Duke to fake the death of Thomas Charles Drews, which was himself. It's confusing, I'm just making sure we're all understanding what's happening. So the Duke asked Caldwell to help him fake the death of his alter ego, Drews. Caldwell said to him, but what if someone finds out? Won't that put you in danger? And the Duke said, Aby, my middle name is John. It's unclear why he said that. Anyways, he had Caldwell go get a special coffin made for him that's filled with lead to be the weight of a body. The carpenter he went to thought that this was kind of weird, but Caldwell was like, don't go asking questions you don't want answers to. And then he kissed him on the mouth. So they killed off Drews and buried the coffin and that was that. That's pretty much all that was in the affidavit. So I guess Caldwell was allegedly trying to sneak his way into getting the estate. But that wouldn't make sense because if his story were true, it would still go to the lady's son. But his brain was stupid, so all of his ideas were bad. He testified this story in court. His only evidence being two pictures of Thomas and the Duke and he held them up side by side and said, see, they kind of, don't they kind of look similar? But that evidence was so bad that they declared him insane and put him in an asylum. They did eventually dig up Drews's coffin, like 10 years later though, because people wouldn't shut up about it and it was annoying. And when they opened it up, what was inside shocked everyone. Just kidding, it was Drews. Obviously, like, yeah, of course, we all knew that. Wait, did you actually think it was gonna be Peter Griffin? Peter Griffin, like from Family Guy? The cartoon? You thought, you thought it was gonna be the cartoon Peter Griffin? I don't know what to say to you. I can't help you. of owning everything under the sun Richie Richie works for me, he sold me a seven son Pennies from heaven, my dog ship's name is Devin If the best is number one, I'm the one to the ones to the ones Tell me one thing, does it come in gold? Tell me one thing, does 
Tell me one thing